Sound is vibration. That's the easiest way to describe this form of energy. We can say it's an oscillation of pressure that travels through solids, liquids, and gases, but really that means a vibration. And one of the best ways to show vibration is to use a simple device that's been around for a long time called a tuning fork. And there are many, many different sizes and shapes of tuning forks. This is the basic kind that you can get from a science supply catalog. And by the way, I'd recommend if you need to get them, that you go to a school science supply catalog, they're the best prices there. Because you can get them for tuning musical instruments and they'll be about twice as expensive. And they even sell these in these special places where you get uh, uh, mood enhancement and those are very expensive as well. So your school catalog is actually the best place to go. A tuning fork is really just a simple device. It's a piece of metal. It has two tines like a fork, a regular fork. And when you tap it and get, little, get the thing vibrating, these tines work in and out, in and out and the speed at which they work in and out produces waves and that's your frequency. So that's what we're looking at here is our frequency. The faster they vibrate, the higher the pitch, the slower they vibrate, the, the, the lower the pitch. And the length of the tuning fork will determine how fast they vibrate. Really long tuning forks take more energy to vibrate. So they, they vibrate slower, giving you a lower pitch. Well, let's just show you here that this actually does vibrate when I take it. Now you've got to have some way to, to actuate it. So I've, and to show the vibration. So I'm going to use my glass of water on the table and I'm just going to use the tabletop here and hit it like this and you can hear that sound and it's vibrating. Now you might be able to see it vibrate when I hold this up but that's not a very good way to do it. The simple way is to have a glass of water. So here we go. I'm just going to take this, give it a good whack and then stick it in the water. Uh, we'll do that again. Make sure you see that. And water going everywhere. So it's a good idea to have a, a paper towel nearby. And the vibration of the tuning fork caused that water just to go flying out of there. There's another way to do this that's not quite so messy. And this is pretty much the same tuning fork as before, but I've, I've mounted it in a block of wood. And then I have a ping pong ball that is attached a string to. Now, to put a, a string in a ping pong ball is really a simple thing to do. All I do is get a small nail, hold it with a pair of pliers, and heat it up, say, using a fireplace match like one of those butane lighters, heat it up and then you can push it right through the, the ping pong ball and make a beautiful hole. And then you stick your string in there and if you want to make sure it stays there, a little dab of hot glue and you've got a nice little indicator of vibration. Now first off, I've got to get this tuning fork going. So I'll take my mallet here and I will give it a good strike. Now it's vibrating, but it's hard to see. So I'm going to do it again here, get it going, and this time I'm going to hang the ping pong ball right next to one of the tines, and let's watch what happens. It's catching it just right, and every now and then it, gets, it hits it really hard, and you can't see the actual impact, but it's right there. Whoops, okay. And away it goes. Very simple way of showing the vibration from a tuning fork. Well, let's take a look at a few tuning forks here, and they, as I say, they come in many sizes and shapes, and you've got a long one, a short one, and so forth. And uh, if you want to, the catalogs will also have one of these things here. They, I'm not sure, I think they're called a tuning fork actuator. Basically, it's a big piece of hard rubber. And the idea behind it is you simply hit that instead of hitting the tabletop. Well, you can buy one of those or you can just simply hit the tabletop and it does the same thing. There's no real difference there in the sound. But the sound isn't very loud unless you use something to make it... Uh, resonate louder. And we'll get into resonation in just a moment here. But look at the difference between the, the length of these here. Let's take this one and this one, try them together. Well, it's a little hard to hear that. We'll try a smaller one. Well, <laughs> we're going to stop right here. We, can ha we have to build up the sound a bit. We're going to use our resonating boxes. So let's take this over here and pull out one of these boxes right here. Now you'll notice with a, with a guitar, a violin, viola, cello, all those kind of instruments, they have basically a sound box which is made of very thin wood. And when you get things vibrating, the entire instrument will start to vibrate as well. And that build, builds a beautiful mellow sound that you'd like to hear. Well here, let me just uh, tap this one here with the, a rubber mallet this time. Well, that gives a really nice sound, but most of the sound is coming not from the fork, but from the box itself. And I'll show you what I mean here. Let's take this one, and I'm going to just act, get this thing going here. Don't hear much? Well, and pick up the sound there. makes it louder. 
You may have a music box at home, a little mechanical music box, and you'll know from experience that when you get the music box going, you can hold it in your hand. It's not very loud, it's very sweet sounding and all that. But if you take it and place it on a piano, oh boy, does it sound better. Because the whole piano begins to vibrate, just like it would when, when you're playing the keys. Okay, one more thing with this, and that is if you have two of these boxes here, and these again are available from science catalogs here, these are actually called resonating tuning forks. Now a resonating tuning fork means you've got two fo tuning forks that are at slightly different frequencies. In other words, they vibrate at different speeds. And uh, that causes the pitch to change. Well, these tuning forks are just sort of out of phase with each other. And when they both vibrate, at times the sounds of the two tuning forks will reinforce each other and build up the amplitude of the sound, make them louder, in other words. And at other times, they will fight each other and reduce the sound. So I'm going to take the, the uh, mallet here. I'm going to hit both of these tuning forks. We'll start with just one. Pretty good sound. I'll hit this one now. It's, it's similar. It's hard to tell the difference, but they are different from each other. Let's hit them both at the same time. So here we go. Hear that warbling type sound? That's reinforcement and cancellation. These two tuning forks are, are slightly out of tune with each other, and it causes that, that, that sound. So you've got build up, that's resonance, and then you have cancellation. So it's a good little demonstration for that, plus you can also use it to enhance the sound of tuning forks themselves, individual ones. Well, that shows us a little bit about how sound is really vibration. Using a tuning fork is a great way to do that.